Heitzmar here and I realized I hadn't done a July wrap up so since it has been so long I decided that I will just do this video giving you my quick opinions about the books that I read in July. The first thing that I finished in July was The Golem and the Genie by Helen Wecker and this was an enjoyable immigrant story about a golem and a genie who end up in New York in the late 1800s. It's about them learning to live in this weird place. First separately and later they meet, they meet and become friends. They have quite different world views which they share with each other on their nightly wanderings and discussions. This book also has a lot of side characters who are also immigrants and it tells their backstories as well. And I think all the characters are really well done. This is a very character-based novel and the plot takes a bit more of a sideline. But it's good because I was really interested in both of the main characters' journeys, especially their careers the golem works in a bakery and the genie works as a metal smith so i could have just read about their work instead of any plot and had just as much fun but i enjoyed this book a lot and i gave it four stars after that i finished a little short story called fairy depth by gail carriger this is one of her self-published ebooks it's an older work of hers. It's a fun little short story about a fairy trying to earn her wings in a fantasy fairy tale setting with dragons and kings and whatnot. And it was a lot of fun uh, with the promise of the whimsy and wit and charm of her later novels. But it's not quite there yet. I gave this one three stars. Then I read The Wicked and the Divine Volume 3 by Kieran Gillen, Jane McKelvey and Matt Wilson. I actually reread the first and the second book before reading this one and I have given the previous Wicked and the Divine comics four stars previously, even though I have always enjoyed the art a bit more than the story. But now when I read all of these three together, it sort of shifted my point of view and I really enjoyed them all better this time. And I gave this one five stars. I'm not quite sure if the third volume is that strong, if I would have given it five stars if I hadn't read this all back to back if it was just the overall impression of the story that it gave to me instead of just this one volume being worth five stars but I still really enjoyed reading it so that's what I gave it. I was actually really surprised that I enjoyed this volume this much because I'm such a fan of the regular artist and this is done by guest artists but I really liked seeing the different guards, the different point of views and the different guest artist styles so five stars. Then I read The Privilege of the Sword by Ellen Kushner. This is the second book in her World of Riverside series, but this can be read as a standalone. The book before this is Sword Point, which I also really enjoyed. I gave that one four stars, but I gave this one five stars. I was so into this. The story is about a girl called Catherine who gets called by his uncle to come live with him and study sword fighting. In return, the uncle will drop all the legal cases that he has against his sister Catherine's mother and that will get them out of their money problems. So Catherine goes to the city to live with her eccentric uncle and study sword fighting. And like in the first book, I really enjoyed the characters. They are very complex characters. There are shades of grey in them. Some people might find them unlikable, but I really enjoy reading about them. I really liked Catherine and there was also a friend of hers called Artemisia and they both really enjoy this sword fighting book called The Swordsman, whose name was not Death. And they are just such fans over that book and I was into this book as much as those two were into the swordsman whose name was not death. I loved this book so much, I was so into what was happening that I gave it five stars even if I didn't completely agree with the ending. The ending was quite abrupt, it was not out of character but I would have wanted a more intricate ending because for me that ending felt a bit of out of the left field and a bit unsatisfactory. It f might feel weird that I gave this five stars even though I didn't like something about it, but I loved all the other parts of the book so much that I couldn't take the rating down. So I'm completely willing to forgive that disappointing ending considering how fast my heart was beating during other parts of the story and how lost in the story and the world I was. So I definitely recommend the series. Then I did a bit of a reread. I listened to the audiobook of Soulless by Gail Carriger, the first Parasol Protectorate book. I have wanted to reread this series for a while now and I bought the audiobook. Even though I don't normally listen to audiobooks, I really enjoyed how the narrator did, especially Alexia's voice. I actually gave the audiobook four stars, even though I think I gave the book three stars, because I think the plot and the first book in general is a fun three-star read. 
but I up my review for the audio version because I really like the narrator, even though I wasn't a huge fan of her Connell, and at first I didn't like her Akeldama at all, but in the end it was fine. I don't know if it was because I got used to it or because she changed his voice a bit as she went on, but anyway, it didn't bother me that much later on. And I actually laughed out loud at one point at her delivery, so that is why I gave this one four stars. And this, of course, tells of Alexia Tarabotti, who is soulless in London, and there are werewolves and vampires. Some vampires are mysteriously appearing and attacking people, and they don't seem to know anything about how to be a vampire, so there's this mystery going on, as well as Alexia's relationship with Lord Conal Macon. So then there was Book Tupathon, and since I've done a completely separate whole wrap-up of Book Tupathon, I'm not going to go through all of these again. I'm just going to quickly say what I read. I read The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb. I read the third volume of Rat Queens by Curtis J. Webb and Tess Fowler. I also reread the first two volumes. I read The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley. By the way, go and read that. Uh, I read Coco Be Good by Chen Wang. I read Lumberjanes Beyond Bayleaf, and I read A Long Cold Winter by Max Gladstone and Linus Smith. Then I read a graphic novel translated from French that I picked at random from the library because it looked quite pretty. It was Beauty by Carasquette and Hubert, and this one I gave two stars. Mostly the stars came from how I like the colors and the simplistic art style. This is a story of a girl who is enchanted by a fairy, so that she looks really beautiful in the eyes of others, even though she doesn't see herself any differently. And it was quite an unpleasant read. Like, in the be very beginning, her mom tragically dies, all the men in her village want to assault her and chase her, and the women of the village want to defigure her. So I almost stopped reading it at the beginning, but I still went through it, because it was a graphic novel, and I wanted to know if there was, if the story went somewhere, if this was an important part of the story. I think it was supposed to comment on beauty and, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and how in, about inner out and outer beauty, but so many awful things happened in the comic that in the end it left me feeling a bit cringy, so I gave it only two, only two stars. So that was that. After that I wanted something light, so I read Honest Night by Rachel Bach. This is the second book in the Paradox series. This is a romantic science fiction adventure about a woman called Dev Morris, who is a mercenary at, on board a ship that really gets into trouble a lot. I didn't like this second book as much as the first one. I gave this one three stars. I also gave the first book three stars, but I think I was a bit more into it than this one, but I'm still really interested in finishing the series. And the final thing that I read in July was Soulless Volume 3 by Gail Carriger and Rem, and these are the comic adaptations of the Parasol Projector series. I know I've been reading a lot from Gail Carriger these past months. I have read the previous two and I really like them, and I like this one as well, but I think this one suffered the most out of trying to cram all the events from the book into a shorter form. There was one point where it seemed like a scene was missing, uh, the readers were, weren't given enough information and it was sort of assumed that we knew this already. That was a bit jarring, but still this was fun and the art is very pretty and I'm sad that there aren't any more of these adaptations since there are five books but only three comic adaptations. I gave this one 3.5 stars. If you like the Parasol Projector series, um, also try reading these. So those were all the things that I read way back in July. I'm glad that I still made this little wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I'll see you later.